You said we already knew, more or less. Well, here's something that you didn't know. Hi, this is Tay from The Dish. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like. Hi, so today's dish is in regards to who gave the tip to Malaya's whereabouts before Quinnell. So, stories have been told in the news that an inmate was the one who gave Malaya's whereabouts. And he supplied it to Houston police investigators with the Arkansas location where Darian Vince had allegedly dumped the trash bag containing Malaya Davis remains five days before she was found. So how did this all go about? How did the inmate get this information? So apparently his name is Chell Fent, that's C-H-A-L-F-A-N-T, and he is in prison facing murder charges and stays in the Harrison County Jail where Darian Vance is. So they are residing on the sixth floor and he said that Vince won't talk to anyone else as most of the guys are screaming at him, calling him a baby killer. So he said that at one point in time he was the only inmate that didn't want to threat, uh, kill him and threaten him. And at one point in time he held, uh, handed him crackers and some soup. And Vince eventually shared the side of what happened. Darian began to say, man, I didn't kill her. And he told him that Malaya died in her sleep and that she had a flu. So, new story change. And he states that Vince looks nothing like the man he's seen behind bars. He states, I've seen cons, and he doesn't look like a murderer. He looks frail. So days followed, and Vince, I guess, trusted him, and he sent him a note stating, Arkansas Feeder Road, Black Trash Bag, Hope Exit. And this is when Chafton said coming forward was the right thing for him to do and that he wanted no part of the reward. And he said, I'm a criminal and I've done some things, but that's a four-year-old baby. And then on May 26, Chafton said he met twice with the investigators. The first time was to flag their attention to Arkansas and the second meeting was to pinpoint where the remains could be found. He also met investigators again May 30th and asked to don a wire and talk to Vince in the morning. And, and Dorian Cutler, Vince's lawyer, said about an hour later, Hempstead County Sheriff James Singleton in Arkansas said Houston police notified him that Malaya's remains could be in the jurisdiction near exit 30 of Interstate 30 which leads directly into Hope. And then that's when a massive search began at the exit turning up nothing, but Singleton sent a deputy to another exit near Fullerton. And so the next day was when Quinnell announced that he had garnered a confession and supplied it to law enforcement. So basically, Chapman said he believes his tip was the prelude of whatever information Quinnell X supplied to authorities after meeting with Vince the morning of May 31st. Although Q says that Vince was the one who confessed to me where he dumped her body during the meeting and that Malaya's death was an accident and stated once you cross the red 
River Bridge, you can cross exit 18 and go on to Hope. And so he sent a deputy to exit 18, and that's where they found Malaya. But however, by the time the authorities reached the junction, the work crew was gone and the lawnmower had done its damage to the bag. Uh, the grass was so high and they didn't see it when cutting it. And Texas Acute Search founder Tim Miller said that after the discovery that he was unsure if the cause and manner of death could ever be determined because of the condition of Malaya's body. And just so you note, the cause of death is still pending, according to Harris County Medical Examiners. So how it kind of started was the work crew saw a blood bag two days earlier, but they left it alone under the assumption that its foul odor was from a discard animal. Basically what he is saying when he met on May 26th, According to his attorney, uh, the law enforcement already had the location of the body before Quinnell even went to see Vince and that they didn't act on it right away, but they knew of it. And uh, I remember the police chief mentioning this. That they kind of already had an idea before Q had told them and so they were already prepared and the way they kind of uh, were prepared was because of the crew finding the bag which kind of makes sense it was three days prior and they called the supervisor who went there and it just kind of came all out um, and it is so twisted and turning, uh, whether um, it was from the inmate or Q, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure, you know, Q might have wanted the, the fame and glory for it. Of course, he, um, they have seized his cell phone to see, you know, what was in his cell phone. Uh, they've talked to the inmate thoroughly uh, who states he doesn't want the reward money because when you think about it Quinnell X cannot take the reward money because of his position and so it will just go back into the funds and uh, roll over and however if it was the inmate who got the tip he would qualify for that twenty seven thousand dollars although he doesn't say he wants it by law even if somebody doesn't want it, they have to receive it or they receive it and then they would donate it. So it's a twist and turn. Uh, it's kind of like, who do you believe? You know, do you believe it could be uh, the inmate? Do you believe it's X? And now we have a new story. Um, it wasn't an accident. She died in the flu, uh, of the flu. And to me, if a little girl dies in her sleep in the flu, like call an ambulance, call the doctor, or she dies by accident, the same thing. So, or a story like who's on first base, who's on second base, it's just who knows. So is it A, the inmate who found out the story, or is it B, Quinnell? So that's kind of the dish for today. Place your comments and thoughts below. Let me know what you think uh, of this twisty, turny story. And thank you for watching and have a great day. We